Now, let, you want to do a demo or anything? You want to talk? You want to talk code? Well, I was thinking, uh, let's go a bit through upgrading a small application from yes. Spring Boot 2.6 to 3. Point something. What do you think? Yeah, and there's some bumps there, and that would be really good. Feel free to yeah. use the presenter to focus button. on on uh, on Spring Security. So, how do I share my screen? Can I do that? I think so. Down there, should do you uh, see a present yes. button? Yes. Okay, I'm not sure if I did it right. You might be able to see my IntelliJ here. Are you ready? Uh, maybe. Or maybe you need to do some magic there behind the scenes, Josh. Um, yeah, I'm, let me just figure this out. Okay, there I have to add that. And then. Yeah, so this is a really, really small application. If I'm going to my POM XML, it's a Maven one. Um, you will see that um, it's already using 21. Wow, that's fine. Uh, nice. I love it. <laughs> but I need to upgrade it because it's kind of old. Like, who does still use Spring Boot 2.6 point something? They know it's three point at least something. I don't know. Three at two in a few weeks, people. Like less than two weeks, three at two comes out. Yeah, yeah. So we, we are looking really forward to that. But anyway, so you will have to do some of the things. So let's see what happens if I just um if I just put this um, newer version here and then I'm going to try to reload my Maven. And I do expect some, some difficulties uh, from multiple points of view. Uh, this application might use some older configuration. Then um, I think the first thing we will notice is that um, something changed in terms of I'm using my SQL. So uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, this uh, repository changed on uh, on GitHub to to some new uh, group ID and some new names. So first of all, I would have to actually uh, make sure that it, it looks fine from that point of view. So let's try it again. Um, but yeah, it works now, no? So it, yeah. it's incorrectly, but if I'm going into the application uh, and my job is to upgrade the Spring Security configuration, uh, it looks like a mess. You see the screen is full of blood. Um, I have to do something <laughs> about it. So let's let's take it step by step. Yeah. So what what do I have to do first? Uh, web security configure adapter. Oh man. So we don't use this for a long time already. So it's it's months since since this was cut out. So that's why right. upgrading from from two point six to three point something uh, it doesn't even exist. So for for a couple of versions, I think it was deprecated, but now it's uh, gone completely. So you, you can't simply use it, which is a good thing. It's, it's a good thing. I really didn't like, like I had to extend, like get stick to that web security configure adapter class. Now uh, the things are a lot easier. So instead of doing that, you just go here and change this to a bean, which you can add in the spin context. It's called security filter chain. Uh, yeah, you can change the name of the method to whatever you want because being it's not an overriding anymore. It doesn't matter what name you give, and maybe you you can even give it in your production uh, a much better name than I I did here. And then of course you need like you do that to put a bin in the Spring context. No, so it means you really have to return something. Uh, and fortunately for us, uh, the things were made in such a way in, in which uh, this is the most easy for you. You can still use the HTTP security instance. It gets automatically injected to your method. So now it also has this build method that uh, returns the instance uh, of, se of security filter chain, uh, which automatically gets now plugged into the Spring context. So that's uh, the, the first thing that I had to do now. I, I, you can see it's still not working. No, so why, why is, in, is, is the HTTP basic failing? We we all used to, and if you are now searching on, on Stack Overflow, you will see again a lot of examples where HTTP basic doesn't have a parameter. So what, what if you start learning Spring Security now? Oops, you are in trouble because HTTP basic now is, um, it mandatory has to have a parameter. And this parameter is called a customizer. It helps you to write all the customization. Now, when we used to use the HTTP basic without any custom, without any parameters, with, with anything added, uh, then it, this is equivalent to using the customizer with default, which is basically an implementation that does nothing. Fine. So this is the equivalent with having absolutely nothing here. Uh, so if I would, 
Yeah. Can I just say, uh, yeah. I'm sorry for the uh, custom. Like, so the 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 context, the builder uh, within the context of these methods. That's because I complained to the spring team, right? Like, because they had the, the old. Oh, seriously, man. It, I, I was <laughs> the one that made them do this. So the um the old the old fluid DSL you had like HTTP basic dot. And then it would you'd have to do the sort formatting to make sure it didn't look ugly because you didn't have hierarchy, right? Yeah. So now you've got these builders within the method. You can call HTTP basic, and then there's a, a builder a context object you can use to configure things. Much cleaner. You get the hierarchy for free now. But not only not only cleaner, but imagine that like I, I will I will get down below here, no, and yeah. I will say, hey, we have to do the same here. No, I'm I'm just gonna have to like create my implementation but what what sometimes people don't see is not only this in, this it can be a lambda that's fine yes right. it can be a lambda because the customizer itself is a functional interface but right. the, the the most important thing here is that at some point this which in reality will be a lot larger you can now easily extract the whole configuration to a different class and mm -hmm. hide it and test it properly. Very importantly, yes. you have to test all your configurations. So unit and integration tests are very important. No? So now you can take this out as an implementation and that will not only make your configuration a lot smaller and readable. So from the maintainability point of view, this is a great achievement, but also testable because you will ind independently be able to test your configurations, no? 100%. Uh, and I do not take credit for them removing the old one, though. So, <laughs> so they added it years ago, right in the two X line, uh, the Spring Boot, Spring Framework, Spring Security Five X line. You know, uh, anyway, great stuff. And you know who did that? It was Glo uh, it was a uh, Lefteria, the uh, Lefteria Stein. She was on the Spring Security team. She did the actual implementation of all that stuff. Uh, it, oh, it's so good. It's just so good. And this is an example, by the way, of the Spring Security team taking the ergonomics of security almost as seriously as the security of applications itself, right? The ergonomics have to be, like we said earlier, it has to be approachable so that people can kind of work with it quickly and, and feel like they're making progress. Uh, and so the API, you know, having the support, having the feature is certainly there. The features are all there, but they're if they're not easy to use or intuitively wield, then it'll be different and difficult. Uh, anyway, sorry, carry on. No. <laughs> The name changes to authorized HTTP requests, which makes a lot of sense for me because normally you were anyway uh, writing authorization rules for endpoints, for HTTP endpoints. So, yeah. Uh, and one of my favorites, no more MVC matchers, no more ant matchers. Uh -huh. Now you only have one yeah. method. It's called request matchers. That's everything you need. That's everything you have to write. And why do I like this so much? Because... <laughs> there were so few people I knew who really knew the difference between AND matchers and MVC matchers. Most, in most of the cases, I've seen developers were simply, when, we, when you ask them, why did you use AND matchers? Because that's what I found on Stack Overflow. Oh. <laughs> so no more confusions. Request <laughs> matchers. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 <sighs> Then we have the access method. I love this one. I love yeah. this change. You see, it's not compiling anymore. It's not compiling because access method was previously made to get a spell expression as a string. Right. But the problem with spell expressions is that people tended to uh, change them and add, add, add more throughout the time, uh, add one more case there, one more case there. And, and at some point, you ended up with like four or five lines of a spell expression. And then something didn't work, and you had to debug that. Debug a spell. <laughs> it's 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 not 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 that easy, no. So instead, now the access, what the access method does it does is that it takes an authorization manager implementation. This is an interface. You can implement it. You can create your own uh, rule without having to write a spell. And Lambda. because yeah, lambda. I'm sorry, just yeah. lambda. I just yeah. So good. Uh, and 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 if you don't have the time, you want to upgrade, but you don't have the time to change, of course, in reality, 
you will never have a spell that says it's authenticated. That's just for my small demo stupid project here. But normally it will be a larger one. No, it's and not easy like to 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 change. And then what you do? You have an alternative because you you still want to be able to upgrade your application. So this implementation called Web Authorization Web Expression Authorization Manager it basically does the same thing that the old access method was doing. It it uh, uh, interprets your spell expressions and uses them the same way. Um, and then the same thing I have to do here for like CSRF, for example, I had a small uh, configuration. I will have to use a customizer. You can use lambdas. Yes, we love them. You can yep. uh, take it out in an implementation. And because it makes sense for everything to be uh, homogeneous and to be like consistent, no? Uh, instead of ignoring and matchers, the name of the method will change to ignoring request matchers as well here. Oh, semicolon problem, the old semicolon in Java. We love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and last on this page to finish completely, uh, right. enable global method security. Cool. That old annotation that we used to be able throughout the code to use Annotations over methods like pre-authorized, post-authorized, pre-filter, post-filter, secure, and roles allowed. Right. Uh, we, I, I'm not sure if everyone have has ever seen it written with any other flag than pre-post enabled in the past 15 years. No. Normally, normally there are two more. You can enable the secure enable, which will will enable you the secure that notation, or you can enable the JSR, JSR 250, which will enable you that roles allowed annotation. Which funny, yeah, I guess you 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 guessed it was introduced with JSR250 <laughs> together with some other annotations as well, like post construct and pre-destroy, and I know we know them. Uh, and normally you don't you don't use secure them and, and JSR like rules allowed anymore. No, I never use them. But in the last 15 years, you probably have all, have only used the pre-post enable. So now what happens? This global disappears here. And then if you use the new enable method security annotation, you don't have to use this flag anymore as well because it comes default with oh wow set on pre-post and enable. So this is the conventions. We set that as a convention. No, we right. you anyway weren't using secure and roles allowed, and the convention is to use pre-post annotation. So why do I always have to write pre-post enable true? You know, it no more. Sense. They just fixed it. It's it's the same behavior, just easier, you know? Yeah. I love this. I, so, I would hooray. add... Oh, what? Sorry. Hooray, we managed. This is it. <laughs> this is much better. Can we see the whole... Yeah, that's... Oh, look at that. So clean. Um, One more thing. If I were you, you could get rid of the word public on all the methods and all the class, and it would Definitely. just be the same thing. Yeah. Even sense. cleaner. Look at that. That's and of gorgeous. course, guys, guys, never use in the no. real world the no password encoder. Use bcrypt. Use, yeah, yeah it depends on, on it, be, it. It depends on the case, but no password encoder is a password encoder we only use uh, in examples and tutorials because, as the name suggests, no op. It doesn't do anything. It's no operation. It doesn't do anything. If you go in the no password encoder, it's just plain text password, so it doesn't encrypt or hash the password. Uh, right. So in a real world app, do use a real uh, password encoder implementation. Yeah. Uh, you could show them the password encoder factories dot uh, static method. That'll give them the one that's like future compatible. Uh, 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 factories, I think it's. It's, you just the, uh, it's just it's just my computer. Huh? Oh, sorry. Oh. Ooh. This I'm one, uh, no. It's it's pa password encoder factories dot create delegating something. Password encoder factories, yes. There you go, that one. Hey, yep. And then there's a static method there called create delegating password encoder. That's the one people should use. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So by default, it's bcrypt, but in the future, that might change. And now you'll, your passwords are, are future proof. Yeah, super. Um, yeah. Okay, my friend. Um, well, this is like, I, I mean, this is, you made it look easy. I, this is, it is easy if you understand logically why we are doing it. But, 
yeah, I get that people are a little confused. And uh, and somebody mentioned uh, uh, that they love the spring open rewrite recipes for migration, and I do too. Uh, but they're not. They don't do a great. They do an okay job right now. They could they could get a little bit better. Is my point um, with spring security in particular. Uh, but uh, yeah, they can get you started. That's. Have you tried, Laura? Have you tried uh, open rewrite? The uh, it's a bunch of open source. It's a, a an API for programmatically refactoring Java code, uh, and it it modifies. I, 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 I didn't have the chance. No, sorry, I didn't have the chance to use it. But I, I think it's great. No, I, it, it should be great. If if so many people say it's great, so it should be. It's pretty good. I did a I, I did look at it once on this channel, and it was a. It's just. You can write your own refactoring rules. You can say, okay, because okay. it's, it's like a reflection API for source code, you know? Um, okay. it, and do you see also the, uh, the the Java team at the Java Dev Day? They just, uh, like a few months ago, they announced they're actually working on a, uh, uh, on a refactoring API for Java source code as well that contributes. It's not a, you don't change the source code, you change what's fed into the compiler, I guess, right? Oh, that's so, really good. That sounds really interesting. It's really good news. Yeah, I mean, we live in, in amazing times, my friend. Um, okay, so I think this has been great. I think I got I, people who are watching uh, on YouTube. You, you just got to, again, I've been trying to get Laura here for so long because I know you're a very busy, busy person and you're uh, uh, very, very uh, visible in the community doing all this really cool stuff. So I appreciate you taking time. It is literally the weekend for you. I mean, it's the weekend for all of us, I'm, except for people maybe in... No, it's 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 the weekend for everybody right now still. But um, but uh, the point is, you really, I cannot thank you enough for being here. Uh, really, really great. Thank wait. you, thank you very much for inviting me, Josh. And again, there is there is no better weekend or um, uh, without the community, without uh, joining uh, you and uh, discuss a lot of of uh, interesting stuff here. So. <laughs> Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Um, where yeah. are you? So are you on the internet? And if you are, uh, do you, and if you want to be found, where do people find you? Uh, you can find me besides YouTube, of course. You can find me on Twitter or whatever the name is now and on LinkedIn as well. So you can, <laughs> yeah, you, you can find me there. It's the same, uh, the same tag you, you can use for all of the, the social media platforms. Okay. Um, and yeah, join, join me, ask me questions, uh, wherever I can help, please uh, let me know and I will try to do my best. All right. You're a legend. Thank you very much. Everybody, Thank thanks you. for Thank you, guys. Have an excellent rest of the day. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. Bye.